This course is divided into five modules. So starting with introduction, then getting started with GCP, Google services overview, hands-on lab, and preparing for Google certification, and also understanding what are the next steps. Before we start further, let's quickly look in terms of the complete course outline so you get familiar in terms of what we are going to learn as part of this course. So in terms of introduction, we are going to start with like understanding what is cloud computing. Then we are going to talk about different cloud computing models. We'll compare what is GCP versus AWS, that's Amazon Web Services, and then also about the Azure, that's another cloud provider. So we are going to compare all these three and we are going to see how they stand against each other. And then in the last part of this introduction module, we are going to talk about GCP subscription and how are you going to do your hands-on lab. In the module two, that's focused on getting started with GCP. So we'll start in terms of talking about Cloud Console. So Cloud Console is going to be your gateway in terms of learning GCP. So we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about one of the very key concept in Google Cloud that's called project. So what are Google Cloud projects? So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Google services. So what are the different Google services available in Google Console. We'll talk about roles and permission. So that involves like understanding about identity and access management. So we'll understand that. And then we'll talk about a bunch of APIs and services. So Google provides a lot of machine learning APIs and services. So we'll, we'll understand about the, those as well. And then we will end this module by learning a very important tool that's going to be about Cloud Shell. So how you're going to use the cloud shell that is provided by Google as part of your subscription. In the next module, that's going to be Google services overview. We are going to look bunch of Google services that's available as part of Google cloud platform. So we'll start with compute services. So compute services are one of the fundamental com services provided by Google cloud. And that will include understanding about the compute engine, App Engine, Cloud Functions, and Container Engine. So Container will be our focus uh, as well in the, as part of this course because that's going to be one of very important compute service. Then we are going to look in terms of storage services and what are the key storage services available as part of GCP. So that will include Cloud Storage, also like buckets. Then we talk about Cloud SQL, Bigtable, Cloud Data Store and Cloud Spanner. So if you're planning to build a global database-based service, Cloud Spanner can be one of the choices. So we'll talk about that. Then we are going to look in terms of big data services. So if you come from analytics or from a big data background like Hadoop and other kind of technology, so big data services are going to be very, very relevant for you. So we are going to talk about BigQuery, PubSub, Dataflow, Dataproc, and Data Lab. So these are some of the key and important big data services. Then in the next section, we are going to talk about networking. So what are the key things that we have in networking? So that include VPC, so that's like virtual private cloud, CDN, uh, we'll talk about load balancing, cloud interconnect, and cloud DNS. And the next we will learn about some of the machine learning services or AI services provided by GCP. And that will include a speech API, vision API, video API, and translation API. In the next module, that's going to be more like a practical or demo session. We are going to get started with some of our hands-on that we will do. And that will include like creating an instance or virtual machine creating a bucket, uploading a file, downloading a file, all those things we'll talk when we'll talk about the creating bucket. And then we will also learn one of the very important big data services that we call BigQuery. So we'll see a quick demo of BigQuery and how you can do your machine learning 
directly on top of BigQuery. So that's going to be a very interesting demo that we'll see. And we will end this course by quickly talking about what's next. So once you get understanding, get familiar with Google Cloud, I'm sure you will be pretty much curious in terms of taking the next step in terms of mastering Google Cloud. So that's where we are going to talk about certification. So we'll talk about how to prepare for Google Cloud Associate Cloud Engineer, how to prepare for Google Cloud Architect Exam, or how to prepare for Data Engineering Exam. There are a couple of other certification as well as part of Google Cloud Platform, and this course will help you to get started on any of those certification that you are targeting to do. So with this, see you guys in the next module. Thank you. Okay, so now we have seen some technical terms and landscape of our codes. Let's just spend some time understanding what cloud computing is, why we need it, what has changed so much in last few years that everyone nowadays talks about cloud computing. We will try to understand what problem cloud technology try to solve. Going back in terms of cloud, it has its roots back in the start of internet. And if you look at the definition of cloud computing, it's about on-demand availability of computer system resources, especially data storage and computing power without direct active management by the user. The term is generally used to describe data center available to many users over the internet. However, cloud is not just about storing data. It's about compute. It's about artificial intelligence. It's about machine learning. It's like a whole bunch of computing services done over internet. And we will see this as we go deeper into Google Cloud, that there are different kind of concepts got introduced. So it's not just about servers and the data. Nowadays, we have concept of serverless computing. So we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Now, if we see the history of cloud, like how it evolves. So as you can see here, right, uh, the, the concept of cloud, right, uh, goes back in, in times of like when mainframe time sharing was there. So 1960, when people used to share that, like, you know, you have allocated time times and, and that's the way it used to happen at uh, that time. Then the project ARPANET came. And then in 1970, when virtualization got introduced, so that's where like you had uh, a, a one resource uh, which, which can be shared. Then in 1997, Professor Ramanath introduced the term cloud computing. So that's where the term got coined. 1999, Salesforce got launched. And then the breakthrough, it came in 2006 when Amazon launched uh, you know, EC2 machines or EWS services and S3. That's much about the bucket, simple storage service. And from there onwards, the journey is exponential. And if we talk about 2020, it's like kind of a billion dollar market uh, that cloud has created. And now not only AWS, we have Google, we have Azure, we have Oracle, and there are many cloud vendors that's there. So now that was in terms of like history of cloud, how, how it came. However, if we try to look in terms of the journey of cloud or what has changed in terms of the consumer? How do we need the, these computing power? So if you think in like 1995, if you need a server in 1995, uh, if, if you were needing that at that point of time, right? So the option that you had for you is like, you need to buy it, you need to install the software, uh, you need to make sure you have the all the arrangements for power, cooling and all those things. And this all used to come uh, with a lot of overhead. Then people move from like buying it, owning it towards like where you have all these things outsourced kind of thing. So the concept of data center came. So where you get all these infra support, like power cooling, however, you need to upfront commit for that, like what computing, what storage you needed, and someone will make it 
available for you. Then in 2006, with AWS, it all changed. So from upfront investment, upfront commitment, it became on demand. So you hit an API and you get your machine provision, you get your storage attached. So that changed the whole thing. And if you talk about 2020, it's like you have different options, like different computing models available. So now you have IAS, that's like Infra as a Service, PAS, Platform as a Service, Software as a Service. So all these have changed the way we need the computing power, the way we need the infra, and it's like kind of redefining the whole thing. So in our next module, we'll go more deeper in terms of what IAS, BAS, and SAS are. So with this, let's wrap up this session and see you guys in the next module. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. Now that we understand the cloud computing and journey of cloud, now let's try to look what are different cloud computing models are. And we'll start with IAS, that's like infrastructure as a service. So IAS, this is going to be the most basic category of cloud computing service. In, in IAS, you rent the IT infra that includes servers, virtual machine, storage, networks, operating systems from a cloud provider and you pay as you go basis. So if you look in terms of Google Cloud, the example will be Google Compute Engine, where you create a virtual machine, you create an instance, and you start using that. Another popular model that we have, computing model uh, that we have in cloud is PAS, that is Platform as a Service. So in this case, uh, in, in Platform as a Service, cloud computing services um, that you need will be supplied on supply kind of an on-demand environment for you and that will help you to develop test and manage your software application so and this PAS it helps like if you're a developer it will help you to just focus on developing your application and not to worry about like how to set up and manage the all the underlying infrastructure so like service, servers, storage, network, and all those things. And a very good example of this in Google Cloud will be Google App Engine. So we'll talk about Google App Engine, um, what are the different uh, you know um, options that are available in the, in the Google App Engine. So that will come as a platform as a service, where you just focus on your application and all the uh, backend part will be taken, taken care of by the cloud service provider. Then you have software as a service. So this is a kind of uh, another model. And nowadays you will see a lot of subscription based uh, SAS provided. So that's a kind of method of delivering software application over internet based on demand. And in this case, uh, whoever providing the software as a service, um, uh, it will host all like, so it will take care of the infra part as well as the software part. And you as a user just connect over this in the software um, application through internet, um, typically like web browser or phone or something, and you use it. So example is Gmail. You don't need to worry about like, um, you know, what kind of coding is there for Gmail, what kind of infrastructure is needed. Everything will be taken care of by Google. All you need to do is create your account. And if you're using corporate, you have to pay and subscribe. And that's all. It goes from there. All the scaling, everything will be taken care of by the service provider and nowadays right uh, after this IAS PAS and SAS nowadays this serverless uh, computing is also a, a kind of very popular so with this uh, serverless application so cloud service provider automatically provision scales and manage the infrastructure required to run the code so all you have to do is you have to find uh, if that particular code that you are writing, right, if it is supported, you don't need to worry about anything in terms of finding the environment to run the code like Java or so JVM and all those things, or if you have Python code. So all you need to do is you need to just write the code and functionality and rest everything will be taken care of by the serverless computer. Now, this may not be very clear to you. So let me give you a kind of analogy that will 
help you to um, basically understand all this. So with this, um, let me give you an example here. So as you see, so we are trying to understand cloud and our like before cloud came, right? So everything used to be on-prem. So when you have an on-prem kind of thing, so you manage storage, networking, server, data, runtime, application, everything is managed on-prem. Your system engineer, sorry, you as an application developer. And then we have IES, PES, and SES. And what you see here, anything that's in green, so that's like whoever is the cloud service provider, they manage for you. So like in case of infrastructure service, they manage networking, storage, servers, and virtualization. However, OS part, like what Linux or Windows you want to run, uh, middleware, runtime, data application, it's all managed by you as, as a consumer of that service. If you go as a platform as a service, starting from networking till runtime is managed by this cloud provider. And you as a consumer, all you need to do is you manage the data and your application that you are running on top of it. And if you go as software as a service, starting from the basic infra till application everything is managed by the service provider for software as a service so this was in terms of computing now try to let's try to make it simplified and let's try to make sure how you can understand and remember it so if you are in us and if you rent a car right so let's try to understand in that reference uh, how th these models are so first thing is on-prem so like if you own a car, you, you go and you buy a car. So that's like you own everything there. So it, it, it's just like, uh, you know, you are responsible for its maintenance, upgrade and everything. And if you need to upgrade, you need to buy a new car. So all those overhead is there. In case of infrastructure service, so that's an example of like when you lease the car from like enterprise or somewhere, right? So when you lease a car, you choose like, who's what kind of car you want drive it wherever you want to go so how much cpu you need how much memory you need so all those things it comes like so you can select that uh, in case of infrastructure so similar way what model you want to go for what color and all you can select that want an upgrade just use a different car so you need more machine more computing go in and and sign up for for another uh, instance in terms of compute so that's like example of leasing car is like an example of infra as a service now platform as a service so it's like you taking uber or lyft right so you don't drive the taxi yourself however uh, you tell the driver where you need to go and he need to make sure there is a gas in that uh, it has all the rule books followed everything is there you sit relax in the back seat and you go so in case of platform as a service runtime and everything is managed by the provider then you have SaaS, so that is like software as a service so think of like going by bus, like if you are going to to city and um, you have the connecting bus. Uh, so you have defined routes, routes for that and you share that ride with other passenger. And all you need to do is buy the ticket. You have limited options, but you go to a destination. So all the features are controlled by that particular route that you are taking. So that's another uh, easier example to relate it. So you have IES, PES and SAS in terms of different models that we have. Thank you. And with this, we'll wrap up this um, lecture and we will, uh, I will see you guys in the next session. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. Now that you have learned about different computing models like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, in this module, we are going to learn how the different cloud vendors offer these services and what are the advantages from these different cloud vendors like Google Cloud, AWS and Microsoft Azure. If you look in terms of the trend um, at this point, companies all over the world are migrating their infrastructure to cloud and the whole cloud computing market is growing more than like 18% a year. And there are predictions that by 2023, it will be around a 600 billion market, and that's going to be huge. Now seeing this trend, it's no longer a question whether to opt for cloud computing or not. 
However, the question that will come in front of you or the question that you need to answer is which cloud platform to go for? Each cloud vendor has its own advantage and disadvantages and the choice of a cloud vendor will, will, will mainly depend on your business need and up to some extent pricing and the services that you would like to consume. Now, if you try to look or compare these different vendors, uh, they have their own advantage. Like if you talk about AWS, that comes from Amazon. Uh, they have a kind of a head start of five years in terms of um, uh, in terms of maturity, in terms of um, global reach. They started early and they have the largest market uh, share in terms of cloud as of today. However, if you talk in terms of growth rate, it's uh, like hundred percent growth rate when it comes to Google Cloud, and 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 like Google is is getting wider adoption. Now, if you talk in terms of integration like with on-prem or open source and like existing Microsoft tools, uh, Azure has advantage. So Azure is, as you know, right, uh, Microsoft is used by many organizations. So if you try to easily integrate, the winner will be Azure. So it depends uh, what's your uh, you know preference, uh, what's your ecosystem and how you'd like to integrate, what are your considerations for pricing. Like if you see the pricing for these different vendors, uh, where like Amazon has like per hour based pricing if you talk about compute and, and other stuff. Uh, Google offers like per minute and minimum like 10 minute charges in case of Azure also like per minute charging. And also in terms of um, cost, right? So if you see Amazon, uh, it, it's going to be like having higher support cost and also the user's cost, right? So cost management will be the key in, in terms of Amazon. Uh, Azure uh, has its own uh, pricing model, a little bit complex. In case of Google Cloud, I would say easier and um, more flexible. You get a lot of discounts and other stuff. So if you are trying to adopt and have long-term commitment, it makes the things easier in terms of GCP or Google Cloud adoption. Now, in terms of um, uh, pricing or the business aspect that we saw in the previous slide, if you want to look in terms of uh, core services, so all of these vendors provide you the services as IAS, Infra as a Service, Platform as a Service, Software as a Service, Container, Serverless Functions, almost all these vendors provide it. And if you'd like to compare it, so AWS Infra as a Service offering is Elastic Compute Cloud. So that's why, where you can rent uh, AWS machines. Uh, Azure also has Virtual Machine Concept. GCP calls it a little different. It's called as Compute Engine. So it's that uh, is a GCP offering as Infra as a Service. Similar way, GCP offers platform as a service, so that's Google App Engine. So where you don't need to worry about the infrastructure, you write your code, and as long as it's compatible with um, App Engine support, uh, Google will take care of all the infrastructure that it needs. In terms of Azure, it also has app services and cloud services. AWS offered as AWS Elastic Minister. In terms of container, all these three vendors, as of today, support containers. So Amazon has um, Elastic Compute Cloud Container Service. Azure also has AKS, Azure Kubernetes Services. However, in GCP, uh, which originally came up with this whole uh, Kubernetes to manage uh, containers, and it also offers as a service. So in GCP, you can use Google Kubernetes Engine, as well as you can have your own, like you can get in, in virtual machines and you can build your own Kubernetes cluster on top of it. So that's offering from G in GCP as well. Uh, in terms of serverless, uh, all these, uh, you know, vendors ha have offered offering for this one. And as I said, uh, this is the future, like where you will see more and more serverless of computing that's getting used. So Google has Google Cloud function, Azure has Azure function, and um, AWS has uh, Lambda. So overall, uh, in terms of advantage, uh, Google Cloud has very fast adoption and easier in compared to AWS and Azure. Uh, in terms of pricing, as I said, uh, if you are looking for a lot of discounts and long-term use, Google offers very reasonable pricing. So as an enterprise, you can take advantage of that. In terms of network speed, so this is like one of the things Google has its own infrastructure across the world and it has its own private backbone. So you can have a lot of your 
In fact, all of your traffic can be routed just using the Google uh, network and you don't need to use the public internet at all. So that's that and you get pretty fast speed there as well. And if you are, your use case or the business use case is more focused on machine learning, of course you will have advantage in Google because Google offers a lot of machine learning services and easier integration. So like now on the top of BigQuery, you get the machine learning, Bigtable, uh, that's like HBase kind of offering. So you get machine learning uh, kind of capability there as well. So with all this, um, let's um, dial into the next section uh, where we will talk about how to start using Google services and what are the different subscription we have. So with this, thank you and see you guys in next module. Hi, welcome back. Now that you have learned about uh, GCP, so now it's time to get started hands-on in terms of GCP. So Google offer its free subscription. So this is the link that we have, cloud.google.com slash free. So you will get around $300 credit. Earlier they used to offer for a year. Now they have reduced it for 90 days. So go ahead uh, using your Gmail account, sign up for this uh, and you will get um, your $300 credit. And good thing with this one is uh, that Google is not going to auto charge you after your trial ends. So you will, you will get a kind of an option and alert uh, when you reach towards end of your trial period. And apart from this $300 credit that Google is giving, you also have an option to use Quick Labs. So Quick Labs and Google has partnership. So using Quick Labs also, you can do a lot of hands-on uh, training for your um, understanding in terms of Google services. So either you are exploring it for business or for your personal learning, I would recommend these two um, resources for you so that you get pretty much comfortable in terms of using Google Cloud. So in the next few minutes, I will show you how to use both of these services. So to get started with Google free services, so, so you can use incognito window uh, so that you don't um, get with any other your office email and all those things. So you come here to cloud.google.com slash free. And here, as you can see, so it's Google $300 free credit offering that you get it. And apart from this, you also get certain free tier products. So there are certain um, services that Google provides and that's with certain limited uses, it's completely free. So like um, if you want to use a compute engine, one F1 micro, it's, it's kind of free per month. Uh, you get 5 GB of monthly storage. Similar way if you use BigQuery, one of RDBMS uh, kind of analytics kind of services. So you get one terabyte query per month. So those kind of um, you know services are there and which are offered in a free tier as well. However, if you need more than what is currently offered in free tier, so that's where you need to go and sign up for that and, and you have to, you will get billed for that. So right now as we are learning, uh, so we will go ahead and sign up for this free tier, free $300 and we'll continue learning on that. So to get it started, all you have to do is you have to open this. So we'll open this, uh, get it started for free. So it will ask to uh, sign in here. And if you don't have a Gmail, Gmail account, you can go ahead and create it. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you have a Gmail account, you can give it, it will ask your um, some of the billing information in terms of credit card and all those things. So just go ahead and fill it. And if you get any question, you get a stuck, feel free to leave me a comment. I will help you to get the setup. So go ahead and uh, enter your Gmail account. So I will use mine and I'm going to sign in here. So it's, it's asking me to go for more update. I will just um, leave it for now. And with this, it will get started. So now it's signing into Google platform. And once you come here, uh, it will give you the console. So that's where if you see here, console.cloud.google.com. So that's where you uh, land it. And if you see here, uh, it's showing you the credit. Uh, like for me, this is like 40 more days remaining. So this is like December 18th will end. And my billing account ID and all those things are there. And if I click here, and if I click home, I can just land it here. Okay, so that's where you will land. So with this, let's go ahead and sign up. And then we'll start 
using this. And as I said, you also have an option to use Quick Lab. So Quick Lab also provide a lot of Google um, cloud-based training. So you can use that as well. So here also you get a sign in button. So go ahead and sign in and then you should be able to start using some of these labs as well to get yourself familiar with Google Cloud. So in the next module, I'm going to show you how to start using Google Cloud Services. So with this, let's wrap up this session and um, go ahead and sign up for cloud.google.com slash free. Get it started for free. Click here, provide your email address and you should be able to create your account uh, for account and get it started with Google Cloud. So with this, thank you and see you guys in the next module. Hi, welcome back. If you have completed signing in for Google Cloud using uh, cloud.google.com slash free, you should be able to um, land on your um, console. So console.cloud.com. Once you sign in here with, with the account that you have used, you should be able to see the dashboard um, for your account. And we can use this as well to do our hands-on demo. However, in this module, I'm going to show you another way or the easier way, and that will be using Quick Labs. So as we saw when we talk about the GCP subscription, you have two ways to um, do, use it. Either you can use $300 credit that Google provides for 90 days, or you can use Quick Labs. So when you come to Quick Lab, Quick Lab um, needs you to basically buy certain credits and all those things. However, the good thing is for this particular module where we are going to get introduced with the Google Cloud, you don't need to buy anything. Just you need to sign in using your account and we will be using this or uh, two to quick labs with Google Cloud. So this is one of uh, free offering that is there. So you don't, we will not get charged for that one. So as you can see, it's a 30 minute lab. That's where we'll spend and it's free. So we are going to use this and I would recommend go ahead and sign in with, with your um, account, email account, and you should be able to access it. So I'm going to click it here. And this is like, it's going to take around 45 minutes. However, it's not giving me start button because I have not yet signed in. So go ahead, click sign in and enter your email and the password. If, if you are registering first time, so you have to sign in there, join it. And that's all you will get started with a quick lab. Okay. So now once you are able to sign in here on quick labs, you will get the start lab button and that will basically help you to complete this lab. So I'm going to go ahead and click here on start lab and it's asking me to confirm. So I'm going to do that and let me do that. Okay. So I'm going to verify it and let's see. Okay. So what you get here is once you start your lab, you get your credentials. So these are like username, password, and this is a project ID that is created for you. So first thing you need to do is you need to open the console and that's what we will do it. So I'm going to click open console and here it's going to open again, Google console. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this credential that has been provided here. So I will use this and I'm going to enter here in this one. So it will take me here. And then you also have the password for this one. So you can go ahead and copy it. And once you come here, you can just go ahead and enter it. And that's all. And you sign in. You accept the terms. Uh, I will ignore this for now. And you have to confirm. Perfect. So this is where you will land it um, to this particular free lab. So you don't need to buy anything. And I can just say I agree and continue. So you get pretty much same uh, console that you got it with your free account. However, this is for limited time, the 45 minutes and it's free. So you can do it as many times as you want. So no worry about that. So the same console, uh, what we saw with your account. So now with the using quick lab accounts, you also land here on the console of uh, G, G cloud. 
So we'll go ahead and see you get almost all the services here, compute, storage, networking, and all the different tools. So we have access to all the same console here. So both way you are getting here. Now in this case, uh, we will continue our next lab where we'll see what is project and how to access it. So with this, let's go ahead, sign in here and see you guys in next module. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. So now once you have access to the console, the next thing what we will do is we will learn about one of the basic thing about Google Cloud and that's going to be Google Cloud project. So project is your organizing entity in terms of all your Google Cloud resources. So it's Google Cloud project under which you will find all your virtual machine, databases, network and any of the services that you are using. Everything is going to be part of your Google Cloud project. Now here in this case, when you created your quick lab, it created a default project here. So that's what you see here, the project ID. Your project can also have more meaningful name. So that's what the project name and it also has a uniquely identified number. So that's going to be a project number. Now, how do you know which project you are in? So one is like you see this info here. Also, there is a drop down here. So the, once you come here on this top bar, you will see here the project. So currently we are using or we are under this project. Now, if you click here all, it will show you all other projects that you have access. So if you are working for a big organization and you have multiple projects, you can see all the projects that you have access here and you can select accordingly. Now, if you want to create a new project, you can do that as well. However, it will need a uh, certain access um, certain kind of uh, information from you and that will be like you have to give a project name you have to select a billing account you have to select the location where you want to uh, create it and also there are certain quota limits in terms of the project so right now with this free account you have 12 projects that you can create it and if you need more you can always go back and, and create a support ticket and google cloud uh, support people will increase this depending on your request so let me cancel it for now. We don't want to create a project here. So that's what the project we have. Now, if you want to go to project settings, you can click it. And that's where you will see all the details in terms of the project, location, project ID, and all those things can be there. Uh, if you want to uh, stop this project, you can do that as well. Right now, it's not giving me an option, but that's also like you want to delete it. You, you can do that as well. However, Google keeps it for certain days, like 30 days in and, and that's where uh, you will have like accidentally, if you did it, you can bring it back. You also get an option to move. So you can select right now. Uh, we don't have it here, but um, like you want to move, you can move that as well. So with this, let's go back uh, to cloud platform and the project info and let's wrap up this session where uh, we have learned about project we saw our default project that we are in and also an option to see all other projects inside the console and this will be your location where you will be working in terms of um, this particular lab and also all your future uh, uses of google cloud console will be wrapped inside the project so now with this understanding uh, let's go ahead and wrap up this session and in the next, we will talk about the different services and this particular navigation menu. So with this, thank you and see you guys in next module. Now that we have seen in terms of like what is project, now it's time to get familiar with what are the different services and how to access that in console. So the way uh, you access or uh, reach to all these Google services here is that if you see here these three lines here so that's where the hamburger menu that you get and if you click here you get to see all the different um, services that Google provides so this is the navigation menu that will give you quick access to all the Google Cloud core services so you can always click here these three dots and if you click it again it, it, it closes that hamburger menu now in terms of seeing what kind of services it has so let's just spend a few minutes here and before i go and talk about the different services i would like to show you a quick tip so this is what you see 
pin appears here. So let's assume um, you want to um, you want to use some frequently, like if you are always using cloud function, right? So what you can do is right now, as you see here, so I don't see any of my favorite services here. So if I want to always launch cloud function, so I can just go ahead and do pin. And the moment I do it, it will start appearing here. So next, let's assume I want to use, and don't worry about if you don't understand what is cloud function or any of these, no problem. We will talk about that. And then let's assume I want to use a spanner also again, so I can just click here and it will all get listed here. So next time, when you open your hamburger menu here, you will always see these coming on the top. So you don't have to scroll down all the way and get that. Okay, so with this, let's see uh, what these kind of product or services we have here. So few things, so um, what, you, what you see here on the top, like marketplace, if you want to access some of the services offered, not only by Google, but some other third party, you can use marketplace and you can um, buy those. Uh, apart from that, um, you have all these like IAMs, uh, getting started, security, compliance, uh, Anthos, that's a new service from Google Cloud. Uh, if you are um, moving from on-prem to cloud, you can use that. So those are the services here. However, on a on a on a higher level, there are few uh, you know key categories that I would like you to understand. So first one is compute. So compute is where you get the computing power in Google Cloud. So it's um, uh, it's, it's kind of all the different kind of computing option that you see like app engine, compute engines where you can go ahead and um, build your virtual machine, a Kubernetes engine, cloud function, cloud run and VMware engine. This is a new service that you have. Then if you see in the cloud, so cloud offers three things, compute, storage and networking. So next is the storage. So what all the storage options you have here? So you have file store, you have a storage that's like this be bucket that we are talking and data transfer API. If you are moving your data from on-prem or from or from AWS and all, you can use data transfer APIs. Then you have your databases. So that's where you will store. So most of these applications, they need some database. So you have like big table, data store. Uh, that's more like a document database that you have, uh, fire store that you have. And Google is like kind of consolidating these two. And then you have memory store. So like, if you want to use in-memory kind of thing for your services like Redis and Memcache, so that's available as well. Uh, Spanner, so that's like global, um, is globally scalable uh, RDBMS service that you have. And SQL is like, if you want to use Cloud SQL, like My MySQL or Postgres that you can use through the SQL uh, here. Then next you have networking, where you configure your network, VPC, all those things, you connect your VPN. So those kind of things are there like cloud CDN, DNS. These are like uh, other networking services you have, load balancing. And then here you have the VPN or interconnect cloud router. So all those things are there as part of your networking services. Then you have operations. So that talks about like a different kind of monitoring. So where you will monitor the logs, errors, right? So those kind of things are done with the help of stack driver. And it provides you different categorization like monitoring, debugging, error reporting, logging. So that's where stack driver logging is quite popular. And then you have profiler if you want to see your application, where is the bottleneck and all. So those kind of things here. And then you have different kind of tools, like how do you deploy it, artifact registry, container registry, if you're using Kubernetes. So all those things comes here under these tools. And then there are a bunch of big data services. So that is start with composer. So that's like your orchestrator where you will like do your scheduling of your uh, workflows. Then you have data pro. So that is equivalent as um, like on-prem Hadoop clusters that you have, um, Hadoop or Spark. So those kind of things are part of data pro. So equivalent you get here. PubSub, like if you're using messaging and all, Kafka and all, so equivalent of that is here. Uh, data flow using which you do build your batch and the streaming kind of um, ingestion. So that's the data flow. Then there are a bunch of IoT, IoT services, internet of things. BigQuery, one of the popular one. And if you are writing for certification, you will get a lot of questions around BigQuery. So make sure you spend some time here. Looker, so that's another uh, new service that Google has started offering for reporting and all. Data catalog to see all your data, all different kind of columns and all those things. And then a bunch of these um, other like healthcare, life science and data prep is another tool where you can uh, clean your data. 
Then there are a bunch of artificial intelligence, AI, data labeling, document AI, natural language uh, translation services that you have. And then you have a bunch of these like translation, vision and video intelligence API. And there are a few other like partner solutions as well. So that you can see here like MongoDB, Elasticsearch and those kind of things as well. So these are different kind of like catalog or you can see the services that Google Cloud provides. So with this understanding, let's now wrap up this session and we'll see you guys in next module. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. Now, as you have got understanding about what is Google Cloud project, so that's what we saw here. And then we also look this hamburger menu that you see here in terms of all the different services that Google provides. Now, what we are going to do here is we are going to spend some time in terms of understanding one of important concept, and that's going to be about IAM and admin page. The reason why I would like you to have understanding about IAM is when you start with cloud, one of the question that you need to answer is about security. And this is the IAM identity and access management, which allow you to control who can access what resources. So that's where you um, control it with the help of IAM. So let me click here. So once you come um, here, uh, you get IAM, um, IAM, and then in IAM, I have clicked this particular thing. So you will land to this particular page. So here you can see who are the uh, the people who have access. So right now, uh, we are just seeing like few resources, but in case of your organization, you will have more people um, who will have access to GCP and especially this particular project that we are looking. Then here you see members, uh, here you see roles. So what are different kind of roles you have? And you can create your own custom roles and all those things you can do. And also you can add here. So that's where you need permission right now. This particular uh, lab that we are doing, it doesn't have. But when we will do IAM labs, you can go ahead and, and play with that one. So that's about in terms of IAM. Now, what are different kind of roles that you should be aware? So you see a few roles here. So these are like primitive roles, I would say. Uh, that's what it is here. So let's just spend a few minutes to understand that. So if you go back to the, the tab where you started this particular lab, uh, you will see a table here under this um, roles and permissions. And what you, I would like to under, uh, ma uh, make you understand is this one, the role name and the permission. So there are like three basic roles that you should be aware. So that is going to be owner, editor and viewer. That's where the GCP started. Later, they added more uh, fine grained roles uh, in terms of um, IAM. So if you talk about owner role, so it's going to be, um, you know, the complete access that you will have. So you will have all the access that role like editor and viewer will have. And on top of that, you will also have your billing access. So you can set up the billing so that you will get charged for that one. In case of editor, you have all kind of access that a viewer will have. However, you will also have access to modify the state, change the existing resource. However, you don't have access to billing until it is given like that. And then you have viewer roles. So that is more like read only actions. And most of the time you will see a lot of people will have those kind of roles. So that's just, you can see the resources. However, you don't have a kind of uh, access to modify the state. So that's where the viewer role that you will have. So with this, uh, let's go ahead and um, you know, um, wrap up this session uh, in terms of uh, um, IAM and it is the IAM service which you will use to control all your access in GCP. So thank you and see you guys in next section where we will talk about some of the API like dialog flow and all and we will um, get familiar with that. So thank you. Welcome back. Now, once you have understood about Google Cloud project, IAM, next what we are going to do is we are going to understand in terms of API and services. So how do you access this? So as part of your Google Cloud um, service, you get access to more than 200 plus APIs that is provided. So like services that you have. And nowadays, if you see, right, uh, you don't need to build everything from scratch. So if 
if someone is providing the API, you can just make a call to that API and you can start using those services. So how do you use those API in Google Cloud? So that's what we will see here. In your hamburger menu that you have here, if you click here API and services, so let me just go ahead and click this. So this will bring up your API and services homepage. Now here you see um, all these kind of API and if you want more, you come here and you say enable API and services. So let me show you what you get here. So here you see um, the API that has been uh, provided as part of your Google Cloud console. And there are different categories that for API that you have. So all of these Google services uh, you can use through API as well. So you have big database, uh, compute, database, developer tools, email, you know, monitoring, networking, security. There are a bunch of these uh, APIs that you have. And you can see like YouTube uh, APIs that you have, AdSense, a lot of people like using Google Cloud Advertising. They, they Google Advertising, they can use this. And then the bunch of these mobile APIs and all these compute engine, cloud storage, all those things you can access through the API. So in this, um, uh, what we'll see is we'll pick this one, Dialogflow API. So let me just go ahead and click it. So if you want to use any of API, just click it and you will come to the page um, for that particular API. So this is a Dialogflow API. So if you want on your website a kind of uh, interface like chatbot or something like that way, you can use that Dialogflow API that Google provides. And using this, you will be able to uh, basically integrate the service. And there are like charges, it's like, you know, um, mentioned here. Now, in terms of if you want to use this API, so first what you need to do is you need to uh, enable this API. So that's the first thing that you need to do. So once you click here, enable. So it will take a while and um, it will basically um, go ahead and enable the API. So once it is enabled, once your Dialogflow API is enabled, you will get this particular page. So that's where we are seeing that Dialogflow API. And if you want, I can just click it here. So that's open the page for API Explorer. So you can um, basically um, work with this API. You can understand what kind of REST services that it support and, um, you know, what kind of parameters it accepts. So all these details are and the versioning and everything is um, here. Now if you come back here and if we go back. So now what you get here, you get this since this API is enabled now for you. So you get a check mark here. So that will show like what all API access you have. And if you click try this API, so that will again bring you to the same page. So both way you can go ahead and access this. So if I just go ahead and click it here. So it, it talks about, you know, this particular structure that you have for API. Okay, so um, with this, um, let me go ahead and wrap up this module. So we learned like how to, um, you know, enable a particular API and what are the different APIs that it provides. So if you go back here, you can see all the set of APIs that you have. So if I go to big data, you see a bunch of those API that's provided here. So with this, thank you and see you guys in the next module where we will talk about Cloud Shell. We have not looked into that and that's going to be another interesting thing. Now that we have learned about uh, API and services as part of this lab, next what we are going to do is we are going to talk about Cloud Shell. So Cloud Shell is like if you come from Linux background, it's going to be very useful. You can use it and Google provides as part of your GCP access. It also provides Cloud Shell as part of your console access where you can run all your shell commands. If you come from the Linux background, you should be familiar with what is shell. So how do you activate your Cloud Shell? So let me go back here. And um, if you are on home or any, anywhere, right, uh, you will always see this section. So I'm going to click activate Cloud Shell. And if I hit enter, so what it's going to do, it's going to give you access to a Linux shell in browser. In the browser itself, you will get access. So let me just drag it a little up here. And it will take a while, so I will pause this video. Okay, fantastic, it came quickly. So here is what you get your Cloud Shell. 
So using Cloud Shell, you can um, interact with the Google um, Google Cloud Services through Shell. So let's go ahead and run a few of the commands here. And all the commands that I am going to run here, it's also, you can access it from here, from the lab. So if I want to use this G Cloud list, so I'm going to click here, and this is a copy button. So you copy it. And depending on your, um, like if, if you are on Windows, then do Control V. So it supports that. So I'm going to, I'm on Mac, so I'm going to do Command V. And I got it. So if I go ahead and click enter here, so it's asking to authorize. So let me go ahead and authorize it. And that's fine. So you get to see like which account. So I'm right now using this student account. So that's what I have it. And it's, it's the name that. And if you have more than one account, you can set it here as well. So that's about the account that you have access. Now, if you want, this is a Linux cell, as I said. So if you want to create a file, so if I do ls here, so right now just a readme file is there. So let me go ahead and create a, um, a file here. So I'm going to do touch. So touch is a Linux command and I'm going to create a text dot um, txt. And if I hit enter, it's created the file. If I do ls, I can see the file that I had created. So that's easy way, right? LS is the Linux command and touch is like how you create a file. Now, if you want to edit this file, if you want to do something, so you can do simple, like whichever uh, you, uh, you are familiar with, you can do that. So you can do VI and I can do um, test. And if it enters, um, here you have to press I to get in insert mode. And I can say this is test file. And then you have to press a skip, shift, colon, W, Q. And that's where you will come out from this. Now, if you want to see this file, you do cat, test, and this one, and it will show you the content of the file. Now, if you are not familiar with um, like command line, no need to worry, you still have an option here. So you see here the open editor. So it provides you a very nice, um, you know, editor here. And what you can do is say right now, uh, I think it ran into some issues. So let me click here. So using uh, this uh, console, right, you can also uh, edit some of these files in um, in kind of a GUI mode. So if you come here, so this is the file that I created here. So if you are not familiar with, um, with command line, it's perfectly fine. So if I go here file and if I say new file, and let me create it and let me give it something like um, this 2.txt and I do OK and it created and I'm saying this is a sample file and that's all. You save it. Okay, close it. All these files have been saved. If you go back here and if I go back to terminal, new terminal. And if I do ls, I should be able to see both the files here. So this is a uh, cloud shell. It's going to be very, very useful uh, once you will start um, using console. So spend some time, launch this one. So you get a button here to launch it. Right now it's already launched here. So you can go ahead and start using it. So with this, let's wrap up this session and see you guys in the next module. Thank you. Welcome back. Now that you have got understanding in terms of how to work with Google Cloud Console, it's time to go and start getting more uh, deeper understanding in terms of what are different services that is available in GCP. So to start with, we will focus in terms of learning about Google Compute Services. So if you see here, so Google offers a bunch of these compute services. So it's starting with App Engine, Compute Engine, Kubernetes Engine, Cloud Function, Cloud Run, and VMware Engine. So let's try to understand what these compute services are. So when it comes to like Compute Engine as part of Compute Service, so it's an infrastructure as a service that provides virtual machine hosted on Google Infra. App Engine, so that's a platform as a service for building your web application 
and mobile backends using containers. Kubernetes engine, a kind of cluster management and orchestration system for coordinating containers. It is based on the open source Kubernetes project. Cloud function, that's going to be a kind of an event-based asynchronous compute solution. So like if you want to react in terms of an event that occur and you don't want uh, a server to be keep running for that. So in that case, you can use cloud function. So whenever that particular event will happen, Google will basically um, bring up the infrastructure that's needed and run it. So that will allow you to uh, basically respond to cloud events without requiring an, a, a kind of a managed server or a runtime environment. Cloud Run, it's again to develop and deploy highly scalable containerized application on a fully managed service-less platform. And then you have VMware Engine, so that run your VMware workloads natively on Google Cloud. So now if you try to understand all this in a short and one line, let me um, share that with you. Here is what you have one liner about all these compute services. So if you want to say what is cloud run, so it's a serverless for containerized application. What is cloud function? Event driven serverless function. What is compute engine? It's like something that provides you virtual machine, graphical processing unit, and all those things. Kubernetes engine or GKE cluster. So this is Google managed Kubernetes containers. And then you also have an option in, in GCP where you can build your own uh, Kubernetes cluster. But in this case, Google provides you so that um, you have less overhead in terms of managing with the help of GKE. App Engine, it's a managed app platform. Bare metal solution, so that also provided by uh, GCP. So that's a hardware for specialized workloads. You can use that. Primitable VM, so this is something that you may use. So these are like short-lived compute instances, comes uh, in very less price. Uh, however, uh, if if Google needs it, it will terminate that particular VM and you will have a few seconds to basically save the state. So that's what the primitable VM, but it will, works very well uh, for certain workloads. Shielded VM, uh, it is more hardened VM, so security is a concern, so you can use uh, shielded VMs. Sole tenant node, so those are like dedicated physical servers, so it is not going to be shared or multi-tenant machines. So with this, let's wrap up the compute section and we will now see next about the storage. Welcome back. So now what we are going to do is we are going to look in terms of what are the key storage services that GCP offers. So here in storage, you can see you have file store, you have a storage. So that's more like your object storage bucket. And then we have the data transfer. So that includes data transfer service in cloud, on-prem, as well as the transfer appliance if you are dealing with large volume of data. So you can use these Google provided transfer appliance to transfer your data to GCP. Now in terms of storage. So storage is a kind of object storage service. So offering um, a kind of a spectrum of storage options, including regional, near line, cold line, so all these kind of different uh, storage options we have. So when we say near line, like if you have data that you're not using every day, so like if you need once a month, you can store it near line and that's going to be cheaper than, um, you know, compared to regional storage that you will have. Then you have cold line. So sometimes you have to store data for audit or for uh, legal purposes. So in that case, you're not going to access the data very frequently, like every month or every two months. So in that case, you can use code line storage. So that has much better pricing options for you. And you can store large volume of data there on, on the Google buckets. So that's going to be code line for data access less than once a year. Then you have file store. So this is again going to be a fully managed network attached storage system for your compute engine or GK instance. So if you want to store some uh, file storage, you can use that. Then we have data transfer as we talked. So it's like online uh, transfer services. So if you have some data on AWS and you want to transfer to Google Cloud using data transfer, you can do it. If you have like Teradata or something, and if you want to transfer your Teradata 
uh, data warehouse data to BigQuery or GCP. So using this transfer services, you can do that. And then also it comes like transfer appliance. So like if you want to transfer your whole data warehouse, like entire data to BigQuery, you can use this transfer appliance to capture the data, your on-prem data and ship it to GCP. Now, apart from these uh, stories that we saw, GCP also offers certain database based um, storage systems. So that includes Bigtable, Data Store, File Store, Memory Store, Spanner, and SQL. So let's try to look all of these in one go. So here is quick one liner in terms of storage. So what is Cloud File Store? So that's going to be your managed network file system. Cloud storage, so multi-class, multi-region object storage. So that's what it is going to be cloud storage. So when you say object storage, you ex you store something as a full object. So it's not like a file storage where you can go and edit a file. So either you write the whole file, you read the whole file. It's no selective, you know, read and update on that one. Persistent disk, block storage for virtual machine, you need it. Local SSD, so VM locally attached uh, SSD, you can do it and you can get better performance. In terms of database, you have a cloud big table. So that's a petabyte scale, low latency, non-relational database you have. Cloud Firestore, serverless, NoSQL document database. So if you're developing your microservice and all, so that's where you need document database. Cloud memory store, it's save, manage, Redis and memcache. So if you want to have in-memory data store, you can use mem mem memory store. Cloud Spanner, it's a horizontally scalable relational database. So if you want to have globally scalable um, application and that backend is running on some kind of a SQL, you can use Cloud Spanner. Cloud SQL is a managed uh, MySQL or Postgres, and now Google also offers SQL Server. So that is offered as part of Cloud SQL. So with this, let's wrap up this uh, storage section of the GCP and next we will talk about networking. Welcome back. Next we are going to talk about GCP big data and analytic solution. So if you come here in your GCP console and if you come a little uh, further here, you will see big data and you can see the bunch of services that it has as part of big data. So that includes Composer. So that is your orchestrator data proc. So that's equivalent of your Hadoop and Spark cluster. You can do it here. You have PubSub, Dataflow, IoT services. So Internet of Things, if you want to do it. Uh, BigQuery, that's going to be your data warehousing in GCP. And it's, um, it's huge. It can handle petabyte of data. You have data catalog, data fusion, bunch of new financial services that Google offers, and then some specialized big data services related to healthcare, life science, and data prep. So let's look some of this, um, you know, data and analytics services. So we have BigQuery, so that's going to be your data warehouse and analytics solution. You have BigQuery BI engine, so that's in-memory analytics engine. So if you use some on-prem and in, uh, in-memory services you can use that you have bigquery ml so that's going to be bigquery model or the training services you have cloud composer so that's again managed workflow orchestration service so you can schedule your jobs and run your workload through cloud composer so that based on cloud um, the, uh, apache airflow cloud data fusion so graphically managed data pipelines so if you want to build your data pipelines you can do it through the cloud data fusion Data flow is streaming and batch data processing. So both kind of data processing you can do is stream and batch through the cloud data flow. Data prep is a visual data wrangling tool. So if you are a data a scientist or uh, if you want to prepare data, you can work with data prep. You have data proc that's a managed Spark and Hadoop. So forget the days uh, when you have to spend a lot of time managing your Hadoop or Spark cluster. Now with one click, you can basically build your data proc cluster in GCP and you are good to go in terms of running your Hadoop or Spark workload. Then you have Cloud PubSub, so that's global real-time messaging. So if you're using Kafka or such kind of uh, messaging system, the, uh, the solution that you get in cloud is Google PubSub. 
data catalog so that's again a metadata management service very useful for data steward or, um, or someone who wants to uh, look more in terms of what kind of data it, it is MGCP you can do it with, with the help of data catalog data studio uh, again a data exploration on dashboarding tool very convenient to use easily you can build your dashboard and all and reports looker so that's a newly integrated one so this is the enterprise bi and analytic solution you have so these are uh, you know important data and big data and analytic solution that google offers and this is one of the strongest offering from google in terms of when it comes in terms of scale or uh, in terms of performance so feel free to explore it as per your business use case that you are working on so with this let's wrap up the, wrap up this section and next we are going to talk about few of the machine learning services welcome back now next what we are going to do is we are going to talk about networking so if you see networking so there are a um, bunch of networking services we have so we have vpc network we have network services hybrid connectivity, network service tiers, network security like using cloud armor and SSL policies and network intelligence in terms of network topology, connectivity, performance dashboard and firewall insights. So if we try to understand all of these like uh, what comes in VPC networks. So VPC is the core fundamental um, networking services in Google Cloud. So that is virtual private cloud that, that you build um, as, as a kind of a network using software. So if we look in terms of these, what are the different networking options or services that we have in GCP? So we have carrier peering. So that is like peer through a carrier third party provider. The Google also offer direct peering. So that is peer with GCP. Dedicated interconnect. So that is like dedicated private network connection from your data center to GCP. Then you have partner interconnect. So that again, connect your on-prem network to virtual private cloud that you run in GCP. Cloud Armor, that's a, a kind of a protection services for um, defense against the denial of service. So you can handle that with, with the help of Cloud Armor. CDN is content delivery network. Cloud DNS, that's a programmable uh, DNS serving. Cloud load ba balancing, so that's multi-region load distribution balancing that you have. Cloud NAT, so that's like network address translation service, so that also provided by GCP. You have cloud router, so that is VPC on-prem network route exchange, so that you can use that as well. You have cloud VPN, and it's in now in available in HA, so high availability. So VPN is virtual private network connection, so that also you can use. You have different network service tiers, so that is like price versus performance tiering, so that's what you get. Network telemetry, so network telemetry service is provided by GCP as well. Traffic director, so service mesh traffic management, so that's what you get with the traffic director. Google Cloud Service Mesh, so it's another uh, network service providing provided by GCP for network management. Then you have VPC, that's where we talked about like software defined networking. Uh, VPC service control, so that's a security uh, and in API based services and network intelligence center that helps you to monitor network and, and its topology. So these are like different network services and uh, as you will go more deeper in terms of uh, configuring your GCP and building the foundation, so that's where you will set up the VPC and by default, well, when you create a project, Google do create a kind of uh, VPC for you but you also have an option to create your own VPC subnet and all those things. So with this, let's wrap up this networking part and we will see few more Google services. Welcome back. So the next, what we are going to do is we are going to learn about few of the artificial intelligence or machine learning services. So if you come here in terms of your Google cloud console, just after big data, you will see bunch of these artificial intelligence or AI services that Google provides. And that includes AI platform, detail lab labeling that it has, document AI, natural language, recommendation. And then you have uh, 
bunch of these like translation, vision, video intelligence. So these are different uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning solutions that GCP provides. So now in terms of understanding a few of these, so, um, and these are like, as I said, a few of the strongest uh, GCP capabilities that you will use to meet your business need. So if you see here, uh, there are like bunch of these um, API that we talked. So you have vision uh, search, so visual search for products. You have recommendation AI, so create custom recommendation. And then you have documented AI dialogue flow to create um, like a chatbot and all those kind of things. And then you have cloud vision API, so image recognition and classification. Cloud video API, so it's scene level video annotation that you can do. Translation API used a lot nowadays uh, when you're uh, building such applications, so language detection and translation. Then you have text to speech API, so convert text to audio, um, talent solution that we saw, so that's job, job search with machine learning. Uh, you have a speech to text as well, so convert audio to text as well. So nowadays you will see a lot of like meetings and all, you don't need to take notes, it's automatically taken care with, with the help of these kind of APIs. Then natural language API, so text parsing and analytics, so that's again there, auto ML vision, so custom image models, video intelligence, um, auto ML translation, a bunch of these, uh, you know, artificial intelligence services that is offered by GCP. So depending on your use case, you can basically start using some of these API services as well. And as part of your uh, GCP access, you can start playing with some of these, uh, you know, uh, API as well. So if I just click here, So you can go ahead and start with like image classification, object detection, uh, vision product search, vision API. So all those things, there are a bunch of data sets as well. So you can enable that and there are models as well there. Okay. So with this, uh, let's wrap up this session uh, of, uh, you know, uh, overview of like AI and the different machine learning services that is offered by Google Cloud. Welcome back. Apart from these uh, big data and AI services that we saw, Google also offers a very good and powerful IoT service. So that is Internet of Things. So using this IoT core service, you can accelerate your business agility with IoT data. So if you have um, like data coming from the different sensors, you can bring it with the help of uh, this Google Cloud IoT solution. So using Dataflow, PubSub, BigQuery, Cloud IoT Core, that's the service that we will see, AI platform, and you can basically get meaningful insight from your all these IoT data set. So this is again offered as part of your um, uh, GCP offering. So if you come here under under uh, big data, you see IoT course. So if you click here, this will take you to a Google Cloud IoT page. And these are like pricing and all those things there. And you need to enable this API. So once you enable, uh, you can see, um, um, you can basically start using this Cloud uh, IoT API and you can integrate your IoT data with the help with, with GCP. And there are like a bunch of these documentation that's available, so you can use it. So these are like tutorials and documentation. So if you want to use, let me click here quickly. And that will give you more insight in terms of um, how you can use it and the reference architecture that we see here. So with this, uh, if, if your use case, and these are like some of the, you know, um, partners that can help you to integrate with that. So with this, let's uh, wrap up this uh, quick module in, in terms of IoT and, and we will um, see next in terms of uh, other Google services. So thank you. Welcome back. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to create a virtual machine instance in Google Cloud. So this is going to be a very interesting hands on demo where you will learn how to create a VM instance. 
So to create a VM instance, all you have to do is you have to come here to um, this hamburger menu that you see here on the left hand side and click Compute Engine. And that's where I am right now. So once you come here to Compute Engine, it will give you an option to create VM instance. So I am going to create a VM. I'm going to hit Create. And here it gives you different um, you know fields that you can select. So let's um, give a name here. So I will give test demo instance. This is the instance I'm going to create. And then it will ask you to label it. So if you want to have it like dev machine or something, you can put a label here. So I'm just going to leave it for now. So that's okay. And then uh, you can have um, like select which region, which zone you want to create this. So I'm going to leave it by default. Um, I'm okay with general purpose. You do have compute optimize and memory optimize option as well. So I'm going to right now go with the general purpose and then E2 medium to virtual CPU, eight, well, four gig memory. So that's fine for me. And here it gives you an option to select the operating system. So if you try to change it, if I click here, uh, you do get different option in terms of selecting the virtual machine and all those things. So right now I'm okay with it this size of 10 GB. So that's fine. I'm just going to accept all these default. And then um, it will be like uh, go from my free tier. So it's, it's fine. And I'm going to hit create. Now, once you click create, uh, it will take a while to basically create uh, this particular virtual machine. So it will take a few minutes to um, get it provisioned for you. And you see here, this, this is a circle that's going on. So that's basically in the background, it's time and it's done. So you see the virtual machine that got created. So this is the external IP. You can access it. This is the internal IP that you can use it. And um, if you want to start, stop, all those things, you can do it. So if you want to view the network details, you can see from here. Right. So these are the details that about the network, like, um, now where it has got created, you have the service account associated with this one because we opted for that um, ingress and egress, like what are the incoming outgoing traffic, route analysis, all those things you can do it. If you go back and if you want to see this instance, like what are the logs, you can see that as well. So if there is any right, so what all it did, it did all those kind of logs, stack driver logs, you can see from here. And then if I go back here, and now, um, uh, now one thing I would recommend if you are using your free tier to do this hands-on demo, make sure once you are done with your lab, you delete that instance so that you don't get charged from your free credit. So this is just a quick demo. I wanted to show you how to create the virtual machine. So now it is done. Now, if you want, you have a terminal, you can do um, SSH as well. So open in browser window. So you can SSH to this machine as well. So let it, it, it will take a while. Uh, so let me pause here for a second. Perfect. So now I can, uh, from this browser itself, I can go ahead and uh, SSH this machine. So that's what you have. Cool. So with this, let's wrap up this session and let's go ahead and delete this virtual machine as it will be keep charging for me. So I'm just going to do delete. Once you delete, you um, basically um, get rid of everything related to this virtual machine and you will not be charged. So all the IP and all, if it, you recreate, you have to get the new IP. So I'm going to delete it. Once deleted, it will be gone and you should be basically again get an option to create the virtual machine. So with this, let's wrap up this module and we will see next how to create bucket. Welcome back. Next, we are going to see a quick demo in terms of how to create a bucket and how to upload and download a file. So now if you want to create your own bucket in GCP, you have to use a storage service and here in a storage. So I'm just going to click here. So this will bring the storage browser 
And if you want to create a bucket, just click here, create bucket. Now with the bucket, uh, one of the things that you have to uh, remember is that it has to be globally unique. So you have to give your name such that it is unique across um, um, a whole GCP. So give some name. So like um, you can see demo dot test and I can give some number here and and dot uh, GCP. Hopefully this is unique and I just hit create. Let's see. Oh, okay, so this is invalid. So it doesn't work. So let me try another one. So I'm going to try another name here. So I'm trying with another name. Let's see if it works. Okay, perfectly. So this worked. So I give a name as demo test VM number seven. Uh, if you want, you can change it because same name will not work. So you have to change it. So that's the virtual machine that it got. Uh, that's the bucket that it got created. Now, if you want to upload a file, you can do it. So if I'm going to do upload files, I should be, or if you want to create a folder, I can create a folder inside it. So I can say test folder, folder for me, and should be able to create it. Okay, so this test folder got created. And if I want to go inside of this one, so this will give you a kind of a file system like a hierarchy, but this is not a file system. So just understand that. So now if I want to go ahead and do upload files, I will be able to do it. So I'm just going to use a screenshot here and I say open. And you can do it. So this, this got here. Now, if you want to download this file, you can do pretty much that as well. So you get an option here. If you want to click, it will go ahead and download the file. And this is what you can see here, the file that I had. Now, if you want, you can save it to your machine as well. So if you see here, <clears throat> you can see the metadata permission, all those things you can do it. So this is very quick demo. Now, uh, if you want to upload a folder, you can do that as well. Uh, we saw the create folder. In terms of moving, uh, you cannot delete it, but you can do a move of your file. So that's pretty much possible. Let me go ahead and upload one more file here. I'm going to use this, I'm going to open. And this is another file that got uploaded. Now, if you want to remove it, you can just select all these things and you hit delete. And it says two objects will be deleted so that you don't get charged. Although it will be free, you can leave it, but I'm just going to delete it. Perfect. So that's a quick demo in terms of how to create a bucket, how to upload a file, how to download a file. With this, let's wrap up this module. And then next we are going to talk um, about BigQuery. And then um, we will see about um, how to use that. Welcome back. In this part, we are going to see how to use Google BigQuery, Google offering for data warehousing and analytics. So BigQuery is part of Google Big Data Service. So if you come here in console and if you click, just go down here and click BigQuery, it will give you an instance for this. And let me just cut this for now. So this is your uh, BigQuery instance that you will get. So here, what you see uh, is um, query editor. So where you are going to go and paste your query. This side, you will see all your um, projects and data set. And if you want, you can go ahead and add um, the add project here. You can use pin the project. So that will basically pin here and it will be used when you query. Um, so if I want to have external data source, you can do that as well. If you want to pin a project, you can select it. And if you're working for an organization which has more than other, more than one project, you can select a particular project as well. So now uh, in terms of BigQuery, what it offers, it offers a lot of public data sets. So let me show you. So these are like a lot of publicly available data set that you can use it for your learning purpose if you want to use it for some kind of analytics, build a model, you can do that as well. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of public data set that is, um, I'm going to show you how to query here. So this is part of this BigQuery public data project and uh, it's part of like sample data set and uh, this is the table that we have. And I'm just going to run a select query here. Now the moment you paste your query here, um, what it, you, BigQuery does it, it try to see how much data that you are going to scan. So in this case, it says that this query will process around 3.5 GB of data and it gives you a check mark. So that means everything in terms of access, um, in terms of syntax, uh, all those things looks good good here. So that's where you get a control here. Now let's assume we had um, two queries here in this window. And if you just want to run, right? So you can select one of those queries and what you can do is you can here run and you can run the selected. So that also uh, a kind of feature you can use it. Now, once you run your query, um, let me go ahead and move it. Once you run your query, you are going to get the result output here. So this is what I'm going to show you quickly um, as run. So once you run, it is running, it will take few minutes and this is where you get your output. So we selected three fields, um, four fields here. So weight, state, year and week. So that's what you get here. So that's what we see on top 10. If you go ahead and remove this limit and it's like this and if I go ahead and run it, it will take a while and then let's see. Let me pause this video for a second. Query is still running. Okay, so now it's completed and here is what you see, all the records here. So it's not uh, just top 10, but all the records that you have. And here is the like next page, you can go and see. It. Now if you want, uh, you can also create your data set here. So this is like a test that I created. If you want, you can go ahead and uh, let me first delete this data set here. And I'm going to give the name as test underscore data. Okay. So if you want, you can go ahead and create data set as well. So meantime, I was doing it. So if you want to create a data set, just click here, create data set. And by default, it's going to be created in test project tab. So you select which project you want to do it. So I'm going to do again text data. Project. Uh, okay, so here it takes only underscore test data underscore delete underscore project, and I'm going to hit create data set, and this will create a data set here. Now, if you want to create a table inside this data set, you can do it. So I can do create table, and I'm going to select a sample table and I can add a field here I can give like name and that can be string I can have contact and that can be a kind of a teaser and no partitioning to the advanced feature I'm going to do create table and this is going to create a table here if I click here I can see the table two fields are there name and contact these are the details in terms of when table was created and under which project, so this is the project name that you have, then test data del project is the data set and sample data. So data set is nothing but like how in other database you create a schema. So similarly here it is a data set and then inside that you create object. So that is the table that we created. So that's pretty much in terms of BigQuery demo. BigQuery itself uh, contains a lot of things like it supports machine learning and you can run your machine learning models just on top of your table. However, those are little advanced features. So I will have a dedicated uh, course creator for like BigQuery and other uh, related hands-on demo. So with this, let's wrap up this section and see you guys in the next section. Bye. Welcome back. In this part, we are going to see what are the different GCP certification that you can aim for. So, as like all these three vendors like Google, AWS and Azure, they have their own 
certification and as you can see here so there are like uh, some foundation um, or you can say the basic certification and then advanced one so in terms of google if you see here um, you have uh, associate certification so that's associate cloud engineer and then you have bunch of these professional certification so that includes cloud architect data engineer cloud developer cloud network engineer cloud security engineer and apart from that there are other professional uh, certification as well so those are for collaboration engineer and also for devops engineer and there are a bunch of g suite based certification as well so depending on your job role and the kind of uh, career that you want ahead you can plan for that the most popular one is like cloud architect a lot of people are going for that uh, data engineer a lot of demand for that associate cloud engineer the best certification that you can aim to start with if you are more uh, in terms of like working on a cloud on day to day level basis and then few advanced one is like network engineer and security engineer so if your role and and job functions related to that so in next um, video i am going to talk about how to prepare for this certification as well so with this let's wrap up this part and see you guys in the next video thank you welcome back in this part we are going to see about associate cloud engineer certification so this is one of the associate level certification that you can try for so in terms of this uh, uh, here is like you will get all the details related to certification so that's uh, cloud.google.com/certification so if you click here associate cloud engineer so this certification is going to test in terms of your understanding of setting up a cloud environment planning and configuring a cloud solution deploying and implementing a cloud solution and successful operation and configuration so this is going to be a 2 hour exam and you will have around 50 questions to answer so that will include uh, multiple choice and multiple select question and you can take this in english japanese spanish and indonesian language and there are like two options here uh, you can take online proctor exam or you can go to a testing center so on site uh, as well and you can find a center near to you so both the options are there there is no prerequisite however if you have around 6 month of experience uh, that will be helpful now um, in terms of preparing for this particular exam so there is exam guide as well so that will help you in terms of what you have to focus on so these are different topics uh, that you can go for so like setting up cloud solution planning and configuring deploying and implementing a cloud solution and then ensuring a successful operation of a cloud solution and the last one is configuring access and security so these are like five different um, uh, modules that you can think of in terms of preparation uh in terms of preparing for exam there are different options um that you can um, you know try so one is like uh, if you are a kind of avid reader uh, there is a google um uh, documentation available as well and then you can take uh, online courses uh, you can do few um practice test and with all this i will put some of these resources in description so you can use that and with this you can prepare it this is a little complex but uh, with a um, few weeks of preparation and with some um, you know hands on experience you should be able to um, pass through so with this um, all the best for your uh, preparation if you are aiming for associate cloud engineer and next i'm going to talk about um, cloud architect with this let's wrap up this part and see you guys in next module welcome back in this we are going to talk about professional cloud architect certification so this particular certification test your ability to design and plan a cloud solution architecture manage and provision cloud solution infra uh, design for security and compliance uh, analyze and optimize technical and business process manage implementation of cloud architecture ensure solution and operation reliability that sre and other things So this is going to be a 2 hour certification exam so it will cost you around $200 with uh, taxel 
and then uh, you can take it in English and Japanese and you are going to have around 50 questions um, which will be like type of multiple choice and then you will also have bunch of case studies that you have to be familiar with as part of this particular exam. So Google has already uh, provided a few of those case studies so make sure you go through that before writing this exam. And uh, in terms of taking this exam, you can take it online proctored or you can take it on site. So you can go to a testing center and you can take that as well. If you have some kind of industry experience like three plus year um, and one year like in GCP, it will be helpful. However, I have seen a lot of people uh, who have gone through the Google uh, Cloud material uh, did a kind of hands on and they are able to clear this exam as well. So these are the case studies. So like, uh, you know, uh, when you are going for this exam, make sure you have um, spent some time in terms of going and uh, in reading and, and understanding these case studies. There are a bunch of, um, you know, uh, courses available as well. So let me quickly show you the exam guide. So this is the exam guide that you have and um, which will basically test your designing and planning for cloud solution architecture managing and provisioning uh, solutions, designing for security and compliance. Then you have analyzed and optimizing the technical and business process, managing implementation. And third one is SRE, that's you know, solution and operation reliability. So these are the uh, different sections that will test your uh, understanding of GCP and how you are going to design your solution. So with this, if you are trying to prepare for uh, this exam, um, all the best. And um, and I'm going to next talk about uh, Google Data Engineer certification in the next module. So with this, let's wrap up this part. And I will put uh, relevant um, links like uh, what are um, different um, Google certified materials that can help you to prepare for this exam. Thank you.